All right, we're back. Let's try to put this in. Okay, so here's our bushing. side goes in a little bit easier on that side. One side's a little bit bigger than the other, so that will not go that way, so we'll go this way. Okay, we're going to try to push this in. Now we can either tap it in or we can push it. We have a pushing tool right here. It's called a building machine. Not exactly the tool you're supposed to use, I don't think, but it'll work. If it doesn't work, I want to tap it. The thing is, I don't want the case to move in the middle. That's my problem. So. Pretty easy. That went in there pretty nice. Couldn't ask for better. Hopefully nothing moved. Because I haven't moved anything. It's exactly where it was before. A little bit of a lip. That must be where I cut it the first, so you overcut it. Yeah. Alright, so. I am going to have to move the milling machine over to get this out, so. Or I got to pull the head out. I don't really want to move the case at all, really. Even though I could put it back on these same numbers, you never know for sure. Digitals are not always dead nuts on. So if I just pull this head out, I'm just going to put the sugar in the hole. Clarence, but not too bad. If I had that a little bit tighter, I've been happier, but she has a little bit of jiggle jiggle down here. Not much. You can hear it, it's got a couple towel in there, but at most, probably not even that much. Thousands. Okay, so I like that. Okay, now we're going to find out if this is really going to do what we want. Clean that off. Put that back on there. Now with the hole down strap, this makes no difference these holes being offset, but if we're going to use this distributor that had the two bolt holes in it, you only got really two options. Leave it, slot the hole over a little bit on the distributor to make it fit, or you can do it on the one hole. You can plug it and re-drill it and have it just slip over center. Or you can put all the, you can slot just the one hole and not this hole. It's better to slot both holes, I think. But, you know, the least amount of damage is to modify the distributor. But if you have one of these late style distributors, take the common clamp, then it's easy. Okay, we need is a circuit breaker drive gear. Kind of resembles this piece right here. And I think this is the one out of his motor because the other motor is gone. And no drag. Slips in there like it's supposed to. Look at that. Okay, let's check our backlash. See what kind of backlash we got. And blow that up a little bit. So we're gonna hold this shaft here and see what we got here. The distributor kind of moves back and forth, so the distributor itself is wobbling a little bit. So I'm going to try to hold that down without wobble. It 
Add a little bit in there. That's our backlash right there. We got probably five thousandths in the teeth, probably. So you gotta hold this gear with no clearance. You can hear it wobbling. Or you can hear the clearance. It's not much in there. The bad part is I cannot do this one without having both hands being used. So let me try to get this down where you can see it. Possibly hear it. Hearing is the biggest thing you're doing, you're listening. So I'll pull back a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna push down here so it's tight. Now, if I had a bracket, I could just hold it here, but I don't have that right now. Push this in, and don't let it move. And that's your clearance right there. Hear it? So that's not too bad. A little bit in there, but it might be as much as five, but it's probably all of three. So if I have three thou in there, that means I can move it a thou and a half closer this way. Now that's assuming the aftermarket gear that you get is the same size on the tooth. Now we're going to go ahead and put this in there like this. And try that. And we'll try it again and see what kind of clearance we get this way. We turn it, we moved it to uh, what, 90 degrees, 180. a little bit looser. So it kind of varies a little bit depending on where you're at. We got tight there. There we go. It's tight there, see? No clearance. That's tight. Yeah, you didn't think this stuff was square, did you? <laughs> like one maybe there. None there. It's tight. Pretty tight. All right, so I'm thinking uh, 20 is the number because we're going from zero to whatever. Now we can probably move it over a thou if we wanted to and risk it and lap it to zero if we wanted to. It's close. Now the next thing is where is the engagement of that gear? Are we hitting on the back side of that washer right there? I would say not because I can see the top of the gear right there. You can see the top of the worm gear right there. It's not hitting the washer, but it's right next to it. There's definitely no extra clearance in there. Like I said, this thing, if it pulled it up that much, you see how the gear now is a lot more even. You engage in it. If you pulled up a bunch, so you're right you're in the middle of the gear now. And we see we pulled up 100 thou there, eighth inch. It's 100 to eighth. And now we're in the middle of the gear where it belongs. That's how far off these things are when they're made. So we're right at the base of that washer. <clears throat> That's why it wouldn't hurt to have this thing raised up a little bit, but if I put that up onto a shoulder, it would look kind of crappy. <clears throat> but I can very easily make the bushing with the shoulder on it. And I can make it the same diameter as this distributor and raise it up. But like I said, when you didn't, then you have a gap underneath your distributor body, you have to bend down like a, you have a bow to it. If you had a single bracket, it wouldn't be a problem. But if you had a stock double hole one, it would be a problem. Now we're going to put a V-twin distributor in there, and I forget how they're made. <clears throat> I think they take the clamp style like, the, like that one is. 
Oh, here we go, V twin. So that would be that kit right there. Oh, it's a stupid bucket thing. Piece of crap bucket. The bad part is I cannot put that distributor in the case because I'd have to turn it down. <laughs> this is like an eBay crap video, except this is a V twin. A Taiwan Teddy crap video. Stupid tin cans. Now oh, the stupid ass design. I don't know what the hell they're. I don't know what their theory is why you need a tin can for, but what do you need a tin can for? That's just stupid. Guess they figured you need a little garbage can. Yeah, what do you need that for? Patch. Don't need that either. And that hurt my hand pushing the distributor. Okay, you got a fancy distributor, <clears throat> a bursted bubble bag wrap, another bursted one, another bursted one, more bursted ones, and a reverse rotation gear set, which is often what that one is, because this has electronic distributor in it, ignition, not distributor. So this is a reverse rotation gear. And we're assuming it's the same size as the other one, but we have no idea if that's true or not. Because this is a reverse, this is totally different parts. <clears throat> that's why if you're loose, you don't run any risk of being a problem. If you're tight, you got a problem. But me, I like being really close. That means I'm getting problems all the time because it gets tight. All right, that's your reverse distributor, or I mean, drive gear. Here's your distributor. This is a pinch clamp style. See how it takes a clamp on there? So that I could probably easily get away with doing a, raising it up a little bit. So this has a crappy ass ignition in it that it comes with. Taiwan Teddy Special. Take that out, put an Ultima or a Dyna 2009 and you got something to work with. This is a like full electronic ignition. Not not an afterthought with a mechanical advance like the distributor has. Now we're assuming this is the same diameter as the stock one. And this is the same diameter also. We have to use these two parts because these are reverse rotation. So they go together like that. But it turns the opposite direction. Because electronic ignition was opposite direction that point ignition does. So we don't know what these parts are. And I can't mock it up because my shaft, this is not the size I'm using. So it's a one time only installation. It looks like it has the same design. <coughs> so if I want to run the clamp, we can run this clamp in there. Now, on the other, but the 61 panel we did, we made a, uh, a, a bracket that looked like a distributor base, rather two holes in it. It was hollow on the one side, so you kind of slid it in sideways. And you had the other two bolts out here, so it looked like an original distributor instead of this modern thing here, which I don't particularly like the looks of very much, but it's what they come with. There's lots of ways of hiding what you're doing. So we'll let this customer decide what he wants to do on that. <coughs> Make more custom parts or use what comes in the box. So that just goes on there like that. <coughs> You have to slot this hole out to make it line up. If it doesn't line up, it looks like it lines up pretty decently. Now the advantage of this is, is if you raise this thing up 50 thousandths, you can easily compensate on the other side by putting a little bend in this thing, and it would push on it correctly. But you see how it's made to be at this height, pretty much. This also got to put a little nipple on the case there, which. Oh well, it does not use that hole. Now you gotta make sure that hole does not go through. If it does, it'll be an oil leak. So I don't think that one went through, but we'll have to check to make sure. So this one's gonna look like this. So if that's what the customer likes, we're fine. <clears throat> if he wants that fake one, it goes around and it, it goes around this direction here and it has a Y cut in a, in a horseshoe bracket. 
and you have the two bolts and you tighten it with two bolts just like a stock distributor would be kind of hides the fact of what you're doing but it's still electronic there's an ignition so it's not exactly stock looking but it makes it closer all right so right now with this setup here i think we're pretty good it's obviously close so it goes from zero to about uh, I got pretty loose on the one side. There might be six, five, six thousand clearance maybe on the one side. Maybe it's hard to tell. You're just kind of guessing, but it uh, definitely goes to zero with the V twin stuff in there. Who knows what it's going to be? You don't know until it's done, and when it's done, you can't do anything to fix it, except do the whole job over again. So anyway, that's where we're at. So. We'll make some decisions. I'll leave that up there so you damage the distributor. All right, well, I got that roughed out, so we'll see what the customer wants to do, and then we'll finish this up in a couple days. We'll work on this and do exactly the same thing I just did today, except do it with the correct parts. And then we'll see how good it is when we're done. If it fits, great. If it's loose, oh well. If it's tight, we're screwed. So there you go. All right, that's it for this one for the night.